Hello everyone, you are now watching Christian Logic Fail number 3. I've tried to avoid this person as long as I can because it felt like every other atheist on YouTube was already talking about him, but today I finally give in and respond to Joshua Fierstein, aka the love child of Kevin James and Fred Durst. Josh Fierstein here, so I've been issued a challenge to publicly prove that God exists and that atheism and evolution are illogical and just plain don't make sense and without using a Bible, so here we go. You know, it's funny because a lot of times people that don't want me to use a Bible, they say things like, oh my God, I mean, that's just so illogical. I mean, evolution is the only logical explanation, but let's really look at how logical evolution really is. I mean, imagine that you've never read a history book and all of a sudden you're driving through South Dakota and you see a mountain with four big faces on it. Well, we know it's Mount Rushmore but say you didn't and say all of a sudden you see it would you just assume that that was a product of evolution that the mountain had just evolved that way no Josh I wouldn't because evolution deals with living things it does not deal with non-living things like a rock living things evolve non-living things don't <laughs> So this whole Mount Rushmore argument is pretty faulty. But yeah, if I didn't know how Mount Rushmore got there, I'd do research and find out. And unlike living things, we have evidence Mount Rushmore was created. And unlike Mount Rushmore, we have evidence that living things evolve. Again, Josh, your comparison with non-living things and living things is very faulty. Or would you think that maybe that there had been an artist or a designer that had somehow carved those faces into that mountain? I mean, I want you to really think about it. Think about the house that I live in or that even you live in. Think about the car that you drive. Those are complex beings. No, Josh, they're not. Cars and houses are not alive. They're not beings, Josh. They're things, but they're not beings. And yet, each one of them has a blueprint. I mean, do you really think that the human body was built without a blueprint? Especially looking at DNA. The fact that inside of you that there's a three billion letter code that specifically tells exactly how you're, make, you're made up. Doesn't that prove intelligent design? Here we go with the typical creationist argument. Look at all these amazing things. It just had to be created. Holy shit, people! Look at that puddle! Someone must have intelligently designed that pit to hold that water perfectly! All joking aside, though, let's think about this argument. Here we have God, the all-knowing, all-powerful deity, who apparently designed Earth and all life on it. But if we're so intelligently designed, how do you explain the appendix, which pretty much does nothing? How do you explain human eyes, which have horrible night vision? How about the prostate, which, when swollen, blocks a very important tube? You know, the one you crap out of? If God intelligently designed foreskin, why do we cut it off? Why is it, on a planet primarily covered in ocean, we cannot breathe underwater? And finally, if God designed the DNA blueprint for all life on Earth, Why'd he make some people with Down syndrome or progeria? If he's real, God is a douchebag. I mean, think about the earth that we live in. Think about the fact that it's 8,000 miles in diameter. Think about the fact that it's 93 million miles from the sun. If it was any larger, well, the air would be far too dense and turn into water and cover the earth. If it was any farther or closer to the sun, we would either freeze or we would burn to death. What the hell are you talking about? The circumstellar habitable zone is pretty big, Josh. Even if we were a bit closer or a bit farther away, as long as we're in that zone, we should be fine. Think about the fact that it's tilted 23.5 degrees, which allows us seasons. Think about the fact that it's the right distance from the moon, that when it spins, that it's able to control the tides. Okay, number one, the distance the moon is from the Earth varies. Number two, the moon's distance is controlled by Earth's gravity. It's the same reason why a satellite will orbit the Earth. Number three, even if the moon was closer or farther away, there'd still be tides. The waves would just be bigger or smaller. Think about the fact that the atmosphere is 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen. Again, yeah. The world has many amazing things, but that doesn't mean that some omnipotent sky daddy made it. You make it out as though the world is so perfect. But if Earth was intelligently designed, why do we have... Why are we vulnerable to solar flares, meteors, and asteroids? Why are we near a sun that'll eventually go supernova and kill everyone? I mean, even Stephen Hawking, the great physicist, had to admit that the universe and its laws of physics seem to be specifically designed for us. 
Now, I'm not sure if that quote is real since they don't provide any sources for it, but even if Stephen Hawking did say that, he said it seemed. He didn't say it was true, he said it seemed. Hundreds of years ago, people thought it seemed like the Black Death was caused by God, but now we obviously know it was caused by disease and poor hygiene. And if the universe was designed for us, try going anywhere else besides Earth without wearing a spacesuit. When it comes to evolution, the one reason that evolution can never match up with science is that an organism has never been shown to gain genetic information. Actually, it has. For example, in fruit flies. These pictures come from an article on sciencemag.org, which is part of the American Association for the Advancement of Science. You want to see the full article? I have a link to the PDF down below. In fact, science has actually proven that organisms lose genetic information over time. So how could something evolve when it's actually in the process of devolving? Again, Josh, this is more creationist bullshit. You know, if I keep talking, this video could go on forever. So I'm going to link you all to a page which thoroughly debunks this claim, along with, holy shit, citations, people backing up what they're saying. Another nail in the coffin of evolution? Well, this is just plain and simple. It's never been proven that life can come from non-life. End of story. Josh, I think you're confusing evolution with abiogenesis. Evolution is about how organisms develop and diversify, not the origin of life. Even if your video did disprove evolution, it wouldn't prove God is real by default. That would be a false dichotomy. It's pretty ironic, Josh. You complain that we've never seen an organism gain genetic information, which we have. Yet tell me, when have we ever seen a talking snake? When have we ever seen a man turn water into wine? When have we ever seen a man split the ocean apart? When have we ever seen anyone live inside a whale? Josh, if you want to be logical, hold your own beliefs to the same standards you hold evolution. Otherwise, you're being blatantly biased. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Nate, why are you being so hard on this guy? It seems friendly enough. People, put this into perspective. This is a man that has made a name for himself by distorting the truth. He has a huge following and with it spreads misinformation to thousands, heck, maybe even millions of people. It's because of blowhards like him that there are kids in school who don't want to learn evolution because they've been convinced it's a big lie. Please, when you see people like Josh, call them out. Whether it be through comment, video, status, whatever, call them the fuck out. You cannot let them get away with spreading bullshit. Because if we don't do anything, people like Josh will continue dumbing down more people.